three windows. In the church. They are within months of Charles's death, their son George died. Um, not as far as I, I presume from illness, and they also put a uh, a window in the church for him. Um, I don't have a photograph of that because, of course, it's not a war memorial. Um, in 19... No, wait, I'm going to go back. Um, can I go back? Right, they also added um, this beautiful lectern that they still use in the, in the church. Um, in in Charles's memory, and it has a lovely uh, picture of Africa and everything else on. I don't know who cleans it, but it it's whatever I've seen it. It's been very shiny and looks good. Because Arthur came home safely, and because of the restoration of peace, the family also they must have had. I can only assume they had lots of money because they put this plaque up to welcome to welcome him home and also three other windows in the in the church. So there are a lot of chapter windows in the church. Unfortunately with World War Two, Arthur, who safely um, came out of the South African war within the first three weeks of war was dead um, and it was killed on the on the Western Front. Um, within six months, Charles, the husband, also died. So that um, from being a family of four, they were now down to um, a wit well, five, a widow and a daughter. Helena Rosa uh, uh did not sit back or go away and hide um, her sorrow. What she did, and she spent most of the rest of the war, um, she organised the parcels for the prisoners of war, the DLI prisoners of war, um, because obviously there were quite a lot of prisoners um, in, in Germany. And at first people were just sending parcels out to where they thought they were, and they weren't getting there, so that um, Helena organised the, the whole of County Durham's prisoner of war parcels. And um, for that, in 1919, she was the first woman to be made a freeman of Durham City. And this plaque is in the town hall. The organ in the church was dedicated in 1917. It, not all war memorials were dedicated after the war, and certainly this one, and it was to the fallen of the, palace, the parish. It included this great one, it's the first one, and you can see one of the problems that we have, taking photographs of brass plaques that have been cleaned. It's much easier if they haven't, because you don't get any reflections. But there's two plaques, there's that one, and then there's this one, which is even worse to see. Um, but this is Durham School, uh, because until they built the chapel on the hill at Durham School, uh, it was St. Margaret's Church that they used. Um, it also contains Arthur Shackdor's name. Following the Second World War, um, they dedicated the North North Chapel to um, the well. They dedicated it to Helena Rosa Duncan Shackle, who had died in 1938, and to those who gave their lives in the Second World War. This is a, it's uh, it isn't this time. It isn't a plaque. It's a book um, with uh, a little artist impression of the chapel and it was done by a local headmaster who lived at Devil's Cross um, and was as you can see dedicated by the Bishop of Jarrow. 
people say people say to me, and Tosh has just said to me, "Am I still doing war memorials?" And I am. And this this is one of the reasons why I because when I was doing the work, you know, preparing and sort of thinking about this, I went online to the uh, the British newspaper library and found it in amongst the um, the Durham Advertiser paper the um, the sheet about uh, the dedication of the lectern. But as I'm reading through it, I suddenly realised that this is they also included a credits table. Now, I have never seen one when I've been in the church. Nobody, the church warden, um, has never shown me a table which was a wall which was uh, dedicated to Charles Chateau. Um, so I've been on the, I've been, on, I've emailed the church warden, and I've said, you know, and he said, well, it can be one of three, but they're all covered. So when lockdown eases a bit, he's going to go and see what he can find for me. So that's why I continue um, to work and keep going. The stories behind most war memorials um, are not always about women. Sometimes they are, but certainly Helena Rosa Duncan Shafto is a, um, a heroine of mine, and she's certainly um, remembered her sons. Thank you. That's we are. I'm in the middle of doing a new um, form website, or in in that, um, and that's the website's address. And if you wanted to email me, I do some. Well, I do sometimes pick up my emails. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dorothy. That was that was super. Um, I apologise. I only just started pressing the record button as you were starting to talk because I was reminded to do so. <laughs> so but we did we did get that. I don't I don't think I'm worried. <laughs> We do have time to take a couple of uh, questions from anyone before we move on to the next speaker. So I will um, not hog that opportunity, but uh, ask anybody else if they want to. You can either use the um, hand raising facility or you can just unmute and jump in if you'd like. Dorothy, it's John, just very quickly. Um, was it Peter Smith that you contacted? About it was, the yes. I've talked to Peter, yes. Okay, so I don't need to do it then. No, no. He's he's going to look, but he's shielding so that um you know this is the difficulty getting into places at the moment. Okay, thanks, Dorothy. Uh Natalie, you have a question. Yeah, hi, thank you, Dorothy. I just at the beginning you mentioned you might be going south of the T's. Um do you have any plans where how far south you're going to go into North Yorkshire? No, it, well, we've said Middlesbrough and Redcar Cleveland mm -hmm. is our is our thoughts. We we did put a bid in to HLF, but we didn't get it. So, but um, we fundraised for the uh, new website, and we've got the money now, so that we would like to because whenever we're down in the south of the county in Stockton and that sort of area, you know. Uh, and in, well, down to Middlesbrough as well. You know, we've got to say to people, well, we can't. You know, we've got nothing on our website. You know, that, are, that includes anything over the T's, and there are. You know, uh, there will be large numbers of war memorials over there. <laughs> Thank you. I can see Pam Graves has her hand up. Hi, Dorothy. Thank you for that. I, I mean, I'm absolutely full of admiration that you, you've got this project going. Wonderful resource. I wondered with the case of St. Margaret of Antioch, um, with so many, especially First World War memorials, we're used to them being sort of shared, democratising memorials. So when you get a situation, albeit that it was the Boer War, where... Um, the actual fabric of the church, these windows, is being installed as a memorial. Do we get any um, resentment of that, of any uh, resistance to it? 
of uh, the space being taken over really by, you know, one family's mourning. I don't, I haven't come across anything that, that says that. I think the ball war was when memorials started to be to, not in this case, uh, an officer, but there were um, memorials put up to the officers and the men, for the, really, for the first time. You know, I need to, it, most, most memorials before the Boer War are to individuals and to ones who are um, officers or whatever. Um, but there are quite a number in, certainly in the Northeast, for the ones who went. And they often include those who served as well. So I suppose, mm, interesting. A, you know, a much wider thing because of, well, yes. The, the common soldier didn't really count for much in most, in most battles before then. That's interesting, thank you.